Good morning, family and friends. Good to see you. My cousin Jimmy Marcus, all the way from California. Wow. I'm impressed. There's a lot of people modest people. Like he said, in a moment we'll be lifted from our graves. First the dead in Christ and those of us who remain will be caught up for the Savior in the sky. 43 years ago, 43 years ago, May of 1979, a very, very tragic and wonderful thing happened to our family during that time period. My dad, was standing at the bedside of his younger brother, my Uncle Danny, Jimmy's father. He was in a coma, and he had, a, had a, a surgery that didn't go well. And there was a man, my dad, your grandpa, he stood there. As strong as he was, he was a very desperate man at that time. A man with very little hope. You had to be at that bedside to understand what I'm talking about. As he stood there, there were three wonderful gentlemen, three servants of God, obedient servants of God, that were ministering to my father. This guy right here, Joe Sanchez, Leonard Sandoval. Where are you, Leonard? There's Leonard back there. And Paul Perea. These three guys, my Uncle Danny was in a coma for days, and they were showing up different days up there constantly, ministering to my father. <clears throat> they knew he was in bad shape, he was hurting. And like many, many men before him and women, Paul Perea, who has passed on, God bless Paul, asked my dad, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Are you born again? And like Nicodemus talking straight to Jesus. I mean, I, I mean imagine this conversation. Nicodemus is a, is, a, is, a, is a big wheel back in those days. He's a, he's a Pharisee. He's, he's, he's one of the big guys talking to Jesus. And he asked him the same thing. Jesus told him. Verily, I say unto you. You can't enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. The same thing was from Paul was asked my dad. And you have to know my dad. Everybody knows my dad. He was not offensive. He always made a decision about what he was going to do. And he used to wear me out. You know, he used to wear me out. A problem is nothing but a decision that hasn't been made. Everybody writing that down? A problem is nothing but a decision that hasn't been made. He used to tell me, man, just make a decision. You know, make a decision. Well, my day, my dad made a decision. He made a decision to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Combined, my dad, you combine my dad with my mom, Ermi Marquez, and me and Silas. You talk about a powerful combo. This lady comes from a long line of faith, tough faith women in our family. My Nulitha Silas, my grandma, whew, she, she prayed till the dogs couldn't take it no more, man. I mean, uh, Regina Sandoval, my great grandmother, you talk about strong women of faith. That's where you come from, Elizabeth. Caprice. We will never know. We will never know how many people have come to know the Lord because of this couple. We have no idea the domino effect that was created on that day by these three wonderful men in the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean... <laughs> Hell had a bad day that day. 
He, they had a bad day. They said, oh no. And I'll tell you what, the tragedies that befolded our family that were coming down the tube, we would have never, we would have never survived that had we not had the promise and the protection of Jesus Christ. There's no way. It was as tough as it was to not have that hope. Have you ever seen somebody without hope? Man, that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing where people don't know where to turn next. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a powerful thing. All my nieces and nephews, all the grandchildren of Junior and Ermie Marcus, you have a you have a big torch to carry, to carry on this legacy. One day I'll be gone, my grandma will be gone, my mom will be gone, your grandma, and it'll be you. It'll be you to carry on this legacy. And you have, will have to tell the story of what happened in May of 1979. You will have to explain. Let me tell you our beginning, what happened to us, where we, where our life came from. It was a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. I was thinking not too long ago, I, I live in Kentucky, in Cynthia, Kentucky. A lot of people tell me, where do you live? I said, we live right next door to God. It's that beautiful. You have to come, come and sit on my porch like my dad did with me and do what he did. But the other day I was thinking about uh, my uncle Tony Ortega. And uh, we have lost some powerful, powerful men of God. You talk about good guys. I, I, I was thinking the other day, Cousin Tony, I was thinking, Uncle Tony, you know, receiving my dad. Also, Dave Lozano, all these guys during this time period. You couldn't be without me. I could just see my Uncle Tony telling my dad, you couldn't be without me, could you? You know, these guys, the way they used to just beat each other up. In closing, family, uh, holidays are a big deal to us. And uh, I remember one particular holiday, my mom and dad were at my house and, and uh, we were watching It's a Wonderful Life. For those of you who have never seen the movie with Jimmy Stewart, It's a Wonderful Life, I'm probably going to blow the ending for you. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the movie, uh, it's been a tough time for George Bailey and his, his younger brother Harry, knowing this fact that uh, a man who is loved by his family and, and has many friends is a rich man. And just like in the movie, I would ask you something on this day. For those who, who can, stand up with me. And if you'll remember the movie, right at the end of the movie, everybody stand up <laughs> and, and raise your glass. Raise your glass, it's right in front of you. Just raise your glass like this, just a little, one of those little crystal clear yeah, some apple cider or something. Raise your glass. Make a toast with me. To the richest man in town, my dad. Thank you very much, I love you. Oh my gosh.